Hi, my name is Chris Ryder and this is my video explaining how you get to Wasteland Weekend if you have never been there before and if you are coming from overseas. The first thing you need to know is that the nearest town to the event is called California City. Despite its name, California City is not actually a city, it is a small town so you need to do all your shopping and get your supplies beforehand. The actual location is in the desert. It's quite an awkward drive along a sandy desert road to get into the actual festival location. I have marked on this map here other major cities of California and Nevada so that you can see where it is in relation to all these other cities and you can form a triangle between Los Angeles, San Francisco and Las Vegas. California City is in that triangle. The next question you're going to ask is which airport do I land in and the answer is you could land in any one of those three cities however the easiest is to go to LAX that's Los Angeles International Airport it's called LAX because there are the most flights that go there from most overseas countries. The next information you need to think about is how do you get from the airport to the wasteland site. Public transport is not an option. Therefore you have to hire a vehicle but the other thing you need to think about is what is your accommodation when you are at wasteland weekend itself. Your options are hire a car and buy a tent or you hire an RV or you hire a minivan. Hiring a car is the cheapest, it's the easiest because they're next to the airport and it's the most flexible. If you bring your some of your camping kit from home then you don't need to buy any when you are in the USA. However, you can always buy a camping kit very cheaply in the likes of Walmart and other cheap camping stores. If you don't want to camp outside in the in the in the desert then you hire an RV. This is the most luxury and probably the most expensive. You can fit six people in a large RV like this. Be warned that you will probably need to have a certain driving license because your car license might not allow you to drive on this. You have to check this. Also be warned that if you are not used to driving a vehicle this large then the first time you drive one, it being on a, in a foreign country might not be the best idea. Also be warned that a lot of the RV hire companies will not allow you to get off an international flight and then drive away in an RV. They will want you to have spent at least one night in a hotel between landing off the plane and hiring the vehicle. But this is definitely the most luxury they have refrigerator, they have air conditioning, they have cooker, they have proper beds. Your third option is to hire a minivan. These are pictures of minivans. They are large cars converted to be small campers for two people. When you set up your camp at Wasteland, be aware that you are in the desert. It is very hot. You need to make sure you have some form of shade. If you have an RV, that's great. You have your shade and you can sit in the in the heat of the middle of the day. You can cool down in your RV. If you don't have any shade, then the cheapest way is to buy one of these or two of these. These are known as a gazebo in the UK and Australia. The Americans call it an easy up. They are very cheap and easy to make shade out of these. Be warned that it is often very windy at Wasteland Weekend. Therefore, a clever trick is to buy some rope and some buckets at Walmart. And when you get to Wasteland Weekend, you tie buckets of sand to the frame of this and it weighs, weighs it down. In general, the wind will get strong at various times during waste, your time at Wasteland Weekend. So you have to make sure that your camp is very secure Always close the doors and windows of your vehicle. Always zip up the doors of your tent 
and if you do buy a tent make sure you also buy extra long tent pegs so that you can get it securely into the ground many people have their tent blow away at wasteland weekend so you need to make sure this does not happen to you use extra long tent pegs weigh your tent down with heavy things and in general if you notice it starts to get windy then you should go back to your camp and check that everything is secure and nothing is about to blow away. Once you have your transport and accommodation all sorted out, you do need to do some shopping on the way to Wasteland. You need to buy your own food, you need to bring your own water, you need to bring your own medical supplies from the chemist and you need to bring your own alcohol. Food. There are only four food stalls at Wasteland Weekend. They sell a limited range of food. You cannot live on that food all the entire five days of the festival. You do need to bring at least 80% of the food that you will eat. So stop at a supermarket on the way. You also stop at a pharmacy. Your intention is not to have to visit the medical tent. So you take with you the usual first aid kit and supplies that you would take to a festival in your home country. Make sure you've got spare medicines and all that kind of thing. There is no chemist around the corner. You cannot buy this at Wasteland. Therefore, if you might need it, you should take it with you. Specific to Wasteland weekend is the fact that you're in the desert, which means the sun is very strong. Take the usual precautions about covering skin, wearing hat, wearing sunglasses and using lots and lots of sunscreen. Also beware that in the desert the dust is very fine. It is like a very very fine talcum powder. If this gets kicked up it can get into your eyes and it can hurt your throat. You need to bring all your water with you to Wasteland. There is no water supply there. Bring your own with you. Think about drinking three litres of water per day if you are normal sized. You should also buy these rehydration sachets. These contain all the salts and the electrolytes that you lose when, when sweating. And if you drink alcohol, then you're going to lose them double fast. So buy plenty of these sachets and add them to your water at least twice a day. Of course, alcohol, that's the most important. You cannot buy alcohol at Wasteland Weekend. You need to bring all your alcohol with you. You will also take all your trash away with you, so avoid glass containers. The bar at Wasteland Weekend is called the Atomic Cafe. It does not have a license to sell alcohol. It, ha it can only give alcohol away and it can only give alcohol away if the people going to Wasteland give their alcohol to the Atomic Cafe. So buy some extra alcohol, give it to the cafe during the day and then during the evening when the cafe is open and you want a drink, you just line up and they give you a drink for free. However, you must carry with you your own cup. They mix the drink into your cup, you walk away. The, this section of this video is now about preparation that you do at home before you come to Wasteland Weekend. And some of the most important preparation is cultural preparation, which means you must watch some post-apocalyptic movies. The first movies to watch is all four of the Mad Max movies. I know there are only three in this picture, but add Fury Road to it as well. Wasteland Weekend is based on Mad Max. It's a mashup of all the Mad Max movies. It's very heavily based on all the Mad Max events. The vehicles, the costumes, the events, the people. So you will learn, you will get an awful lot more experience and a lot more fun out of Wasteland Weekend if you watch all of the Mad Max movies at least once. This might seem obvious to some people, but there are many people who were born a long time after the third Mad Max movie was made and they have not heard of it. I highly recommend that everybody watches all the Mad Max movies at least once before they go to Wasteland Weekend. You will enjoy it so much more. 
If you are watching Mad Max 1, make sure you set the soundtrack to original Australian because the default English soundtrack on Mad Max 1 is actually an American overdub and everybody tells you that the Australian version is way better. So watch Mad Max 1 with the original Australian soundtrack. The second movie that you should watch is called Blood of Heroes. This is the movie where the game of Jugger was invented. Blood of Heroes is set in a post-apocalyptic world. Jugger is a sport which is played in this post-apocalypse and Jugger is the official sport of Wasteland Weekend. There are three Jugger teams based in LA. They practice outside of Wasteland Weekend and they play the, a league of matches at Wasteland. It is like watching a Wasteland version of the Super Bowl with cheerleaders and commentators. Watch Blood of Heroes, you will understand much more about Jugger. The third cultural research you should do is play the Fallout computer game. If you don't want to spend many hours playing the game, at least learn a lot about it. It is referenced an awful lot in, at Wasteland Weekend because Fallout is a computer game set in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Learn about a lot of the features and the stories in Fallout. You will hear about things like Nuka Cola and the Legio and many things like that. Most importantly, in Fallout, they use bottle caps as a currency and bottle caps are also a kind of currency at Wasteland Weekend. They are no use at the uh, army surplus stalls or the food stalls because they use old world US dollars. But many people have souvenir bottle caps. You can get them custom printed this originates from the home brewing industry where people could get their own bottle caps for their own brews. Well, a lot of the tribes and a lot of the groups at Wasteland get custom bottle caps printed with their logo or their slogan on them. You might want to do the same if you have a tribe of you and people hand out the their bottle caps to people at Wasteland. There's some pictures here of all of mine. You may wish to get your own bottle caps. The other piece of preparation which you must do at home before you come to Wasteland Weekend is you must make a costume. There is a simple rule at Wasteland Weekend, no costume, no entry. There are no spectators at Wasteland. Everyone there is part of the show for everyone else, so everyone has to make an effort to create this immersion in the post-apocalypse. There are costume police there and if they consider that your costume does not fit in with the theme or has not been appropriately weathered or distressed then they can politely but firmly insist that you go over to the army surplus stalls and you buy some army surplus clothing and at least get a better costume there. When you are designing your costume, you need to be aware that the desert is very, very hot by day, but it can get very cold at night. So you should design your costume to be flexible so that it is comfortable in a wide range of temperatures. There are a few different types of costume. One very common type of costume is to make a Mad Max movie replica costume. You could use any one of the four Mad Max movies or you could make a costume from one of the other post-apocalyptic movies or other post-apocalyptic computer games. A second very common type of costume is the distressed military look. This is by far the most common. To achieve this look you get a blend of army surplus clothing and civilian clothing and you distress all of this clothing to make it look very worn and very old. The theme of the event is that the apocalypse happened about 10 years ago. So you must make your clothing, your costume, look that old and that worn. There are lots and lots of very useful costuming tutorials on YouTube. You should search YouTube for Nuclear Snail Studios and also for Mark Cordroy Creations. Both of those have lots of useful advice in how to make a post-apocalyptic costume. And if you don't want to make a Mad Max costume or a military costume, then at the very least stick to dark colours or natural colours and make sure you do the same distressing to achieve the 
it's 10 years ago since the blast happened sort of look. This final section of the video breaks down all the different expenses that you're going to have to pay in order to get yourself to Wasteland Weekend. The single most expensive part is your flight to LAX Airport. There are several different flights which get you from the UK to LAX, but the one that I recommend that you use is the single 10 hour flight from Heathrow to LAX. The alternative to that is you do two five hour flights with a layover either in Reykjavik or in the east coast of the USA. The great advantage of doing the uh, single 10 hour flight is that at the end of the weekend when you're absolutely exhausted after partying hard, you get onto that plane at LAX and as soon as it takes off you can take a sleeping pill and wake up in Heathrow and that's an awful lot more pleasant than having to change planes halfway through your journey home. When you book your flight, do book an extra hold luggage bag. You get a second 20 kilo bag. Uh, that is the easiest and cheapest way to get your costume over to Wasteland with you as well. Uh, and also, if you don't live very close to London, then you've got to figure out a way of getting to Heathrow. And for most people, that is get a flight on your on from your local regional airport. Every time I've done... I've done this every time I've booked a flight to the US to get to Wasteland. It's always cost me 900 and something pounds. So realistically speaking, let's call it a thousand quid for easy reckoning. You also need to get travel insurance. You are flying to the USA. Healthcare is prohibitively expensive. So if something goes wrong health wise, it will be very expensive. Much better for you to have insurance. The remaining expenses are all in US dollars. There's the ticket to get you into the event. You buy that in advance. You cannot buy it on the gate. Uh, there is an ESTA visa. If you've never been to the USA, an ESTA visa is the short-term transit visa which allows you to get on and off the plane in the USA. You're allowed to visit for a short time. I think it's either 60 or 90 days per visit. And the visa itself is valid for multiple trips within two years. It costs $14. It is a long form to fill in. There are many pages to this form. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour to fill it in. Because it's quite long, there's a lot of companies which will charge you 50 or or £100 pounds to fill this form in on your behalf. To be honest, you don't need to do that. It's not difficult. It's just long. Uh, and they ask for a lot of details. One of the details they ask for is a name and address of somewhere you are staying whilst in the USA. If you do not have a family member or a friend in California who you can give as your contact name, then put down a motel or a hotel. You probably need to have one night in a motel or hotel when you get to the USA anyway. There'll be one night between landing at LAX and actually arriving at Wasteland Weekend. That can cost you anything between $60 and $200 or more. Uh, one person in your party needs to have the ability to use their phone in the USA. So you get a SIM card, either get an American one when you land or you take a travel SIM over there with you. You need to be able to use your phone because you will navigate using Google Maps. And the Wasteland organization does a lot of communication via Facebook. So that will keep you updated whilst you're there. It's also nice to be able to post lots of photos of you having a uh, having a wonderful time in this exotic new party that none of your friends back in the UK are at. Uh, where uh, This section here where I've put transport to Wasteland Weekend and where you sleep, if you decide that there's, if there's only two of you and you're going to hire a car and you're going to buy some camping equipment, it's going to end up costing you about $400 each. On the other hand, if there's a group of six of you and you decide that you're going to hire an RV, that's probably going to cost $2,000 for the RV hire between six of you. Well, that's nearly $400 each. So it's going to cost roughly $400 for your underground transport and the whatever you stay in whilst you're at Wasteland Weekend itself. Add in a bit for fuel, add in a bit for food and drink whilst you're at Wasteland Weekend. You can see what that added up to in US dollars. I converted it to pounds, which gives you a number in red on that. And you can see that in total, it's roughly two thousand pounds which it's going to cost you to get to wasteland weekend 
those costs are approximate. There are a few extras that I haven't mentioned here. So anything else you spend in the USA is on top of this. Uh, so as an absolute minimum, you need to think that you're going to be spending £2,000 to get to Wasteland Weekend. Uh, you don't spend it all in one go. The sooner you buy your flight, the cheaper that becomes. And the sooner you book your hire car or RV, the cheaper that becomes. I have seen deals where you can hire an RV for $500 for the week which covers Wasteland. But that means, or to get those deals, you have to book it more than a year in advance. Well worth thinking about. So there you go. That gives you a rough idea of how much it's going to cost. And in general, I hope this video has been useful. If you are thinking of going to Wasteland Weekend, uh, there's no party like it on Earth. Well, I've not found it yet and I'm looking for it. Um, and I hope this is useful to you. If you see me at one of the post-apocalyptic events, come over, say hello, let's share a beer.